is going on guys welcome to a video slash micro lecture brought to you by the simple engineer today we are going to be delving into the topic of the prologue programming language so to begin uh, we're first going to want to download uh, two pieces of software they're both free both cross-platform uh, the first one is going to be the text editor and it is called sublime text and the second is the IDE which is called SWI Prolog and this will be used to compile and run your prolog code. Okay, so many of you may be asking what is prolog? Well, prolog falls under the paradigm of logic and it's a declarative programming language and what that means is that it kind of gets rid of programming and Prolog itself uses something known as predicate logic or predicate syntax and it's similar to that of the natural language and it was developed to more easily convey ideas. So three things that I want to cover in this video since we're kind of short on time is first we want to cover what facts, what facts are. We want to cover what rules are, and then we're going to delve into the compiler, write some code, and cover what queries are. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and look at facts. So facts are basically just what is known. They're just uh, axioms about some objects and their relationship. So we'll go ahead and give a couple examples of that. So say we have a couple facts. Let's say our first fact is Johnny Johnny is fat. We have another fact called the dog is Brown, Susie likes Bobby, etc., etc. You get the idea. These are facts. Now we want to convert this to predicate logic um, in terms of prologue to understand. So we take the predicate. So let's highlight the predicates. We have fat, we have brown, and we have likes. So to convert this in terms of prolog, we would say, what is fat? Well, Johnny's fat. And then we end this fact with a period. This is how every expression or fact is ended in prolog. Then we would say, what is brown? Well, the dog is brown. Who does who like? Likes Susie. Susie likes Bobby. So here, the only difference is there's two arguments and the predicate. So the predicate satisfies two arguments. Now, something to note is the number of arguments here. So you see one argument, one argument, two arguments. This is known as the arity. So if you see the number of arguments or something referred to as arity, that's the number of parameters or the number of arguments passed in this type of constructor. Okay, next thing we want to look at are rules. Now, rules just extend the facts about objects and their relationship. They really enable you to infer facts from other facts in a more simpler explanation. So let's go ahead and look at an example for rules. Okay, so we say that, um, let's give an example. We know, let's say Ryan likes, these should actually be lowercase. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's say Ryan likes Brittany, end it, and we'll say, Brittany likes Ryan, and we'll do a final one, say Dan likes 
Josh. Okay, now, now we see that these people like each other as friends, but we want to know if they're dating. So we're going to create a rule to better understand this idea. So we'll create a rule called dating, and it'll involve person X and person Y. And person X is dating person Y, and likewise, if and only if, which is denoted by the logical implication of a colon and a hyphen, if and only if person X likes person Y and person Y likes person X. Okay, so there's a few things to note here that may look a little strange. First of all, what is this logical implication here? Well, there's actually a column of rules that you should be aware of. First of all, you know in programming we have AND statements, we have IF statements, we have OR statements, and we have NOT or negated statements. So the equivalence for all of these will be denoted by the following. AND statements are always denoted by a comma. IF statements are denoted by a colon and a hyphen. OR statements are denoted by a semicolon and NOT statements are denoted by the English term NOT. Okay, so here we're saying person X, which is capital, so remember that all variables are capital letters or capital words. So we're saying person X is dating person Y if and only if person X likes person Y and person Y likes person X. If all of this is true, then the output of the compiler should return true, else it would return false. Okay, so now we've covered rules. So let's go ahead and jump into queries. Queries will combine the ideas of facts and rules together, except we will now be using the compiler to exemplify this idea. So let's say, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Sublime. And where is Sublime text? Okay. So go ahead and open up Sublime or your preferred text editor. And also go ahead and open up SWI Prolog which is the compiler. Okay, so we made a couple couple rules here. We said uh, Dan likes Sally. Sally likes Dan. And Josh likes Brittany. Okay. Then we'll create a rule and we'll say dating person X, dating person Y, if and only if person X likes person Y, and person Y likes person X, and it. Then we'll create a, uh, let's say we'll create a rule called friendship of X and Y. So person X is friends with person Y, if and only if person X likes person Y or person Y likes person X. Okay. So we'll save this to your desktop. The extension is .pl for prolog. So we'll say testing.pl. And I'll go ahead and replace that. Now to run this, you just go opening left bracket, single quote, type in the location of the file, mine's on my desktop, in single quote, in right bracket, period, and this ends the statement. I'll go ahead and hit enter. There are no compilation errors, which is good. So now we can actually start querying. So to query, we'll say, let's see, okay, you see that there's a question mark here in the compiler, so it's saying basically ask a question. And my question is, does Dan like Sally? 
Okay, well this is true because in our fact base or in our database, Dan does like Sally. Okay, so we can say likes Blake comma Josh. Okay, well this is false because we haven't defined in our fact base or our database that Blake likes Josh. Okay, now we'll jump into the rule and we'll say, okay, we want to know if Dan and Sally are dating. So we'll say Dan and Sally. This is true because Dan likes Sally and Sally likes Dan and that satisfies what we have here. Now, Josh and Brittany are not dating because Josh may like Brittany, but Brittany doesn't like him back. However, if we look at the friendship rule, and we say Josh and Brittany. Well, this is true because here we say, okay, X has to like Y or person Y has to like person X. And here we know that Josh does like Brittany, but Brittany doesn't necessarily like him back. Okay, so we've covered prologue facts, rules, and queries, and I've showed you guys how to compile and run your first prologue program. Hopefully that gets you started. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment in the bottom of the video, and I will get back to you.